Welcome back everybody. And if you're new to the channel, this is Riley. <clears throat> Say hello, Riley. And I'm sometime as now. And today we're gonna take this 54 inch uh, John Deere snowblower off my 1025R and we're going, to we're going to convert the chain and sprockets and open face chain and sprockets into this uh, over to this uh, parallel box which is a sealed unit that runs in an 80 weight 90 weight uh, gear oil so a lot less maintenance and uh, I'll go and uh, I'll put all the uh, part numbers and everything in the description plus I'll list all the part numbers up on the screen So anybody that's interested, these, uh, the price on these came way down, so I decided to uh, install this. And uh, I'll, go over, I'll go over everything and all the steps of installing it as we go. So uh, stay tuned. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take off this guard shroud. Get this out of the way so we can get to this adjusting piece. So we'll get these. There's, there's four bolts, carriage bolts, with a half inch nut. So we'll take these off first. Once we get that out of the way. <clears throat> All right, so now we got to pull, there's four more carriage bolts with a uh, half inch on the top, two on top, two on the bottom. We should be able to slide this over enough to get the chain off it, but maybe not. Should be able to get the chain off this. There we go. I was leaning on that auger out front. All right, so once we get this out, we'll set this aside because we're not going to need this piece anymore. All we're going to need is this. What do you think, Riley? Huh? You're supposed to be helping. Where were you, sleeping? Huh? Where were you, sleeping? <laughs> How's people going to see if you're in the way? Huh? All right, so now... <laughs> so now we have to pull these two... These two flat bolts out. And they are, I believe, three-eighths. Yep. So we'll loosen these up. So it looks like we're going to have to get a couple die bars. Okay, so now that we've backed these two bolts off and took the pressure off binding on the shaft, so you're either going to have to use a puller or some, get behind it with something. I have these die setter bars. So we can get behind this and kind of pry up a little bit. These are handy to have. And there we go. So we'll get these uh, three nuts off here and then we'll turn this around and we'll tackle the front. All right, so just like I said, when we took that, uh, that adjuster plate off, you gotta be able to push the bolts from the other side 
because one, after it loosens up, it drops the bolt out and then that flat spot that holds it from turning is no longer there So because the bolt wants to push out enough. So now it's just spinning. So we'll have to, once we get it turned around, we'll have to finish the getting these off. All right, so now that we started loosening these up, um, we got to get this locking collar off and this key so we can push the shaft through. So what they, they call this a locking collar. So you uh, loosen the set screw and then there's a notch right here that you tap. You'll tap this with a punch and it, it's kind of like an eccentric and it locks in. So all you have to do is just unlock it and then it'll just slide right off once we get the key out of the way. So we'll get the key first. Should be able to just get off the back side of that. All right, so there's the key. So I believe the set screw is eighth inch. And usually, just tap them easily. Then you just turn that and it lifts right off. If you can see how it's got an offset, all it does is it sits on here and it pinches and it locks on. So now we'll be able to push that shaft through to get this out. All right, so now we gotta take these three bolts out on each end of the auger. I'm not going to take them all the way off right now. <clears throat> I'm just going to tap them out. I'll use it. I'll leave it. I'll leave them in there a little bit, and so it'll hold it up until I do the other end. Now I'm going to take the. Bottom two out, leave the top one in for now. And I'll do the same thing with the other one. All right, so now that I have Two out of the three bolts out. I've just left the top one in each one. I'll now remove the top bolt. So I'm going to lift up on the auger and pull the bolt out. On the auger it's got to be positioned so this can clear let's take it you have to have this position you don't want this at the bottom because when you go to pull this out this auger is going to hit here so you're going to want that so it clears on both sides so you can slide everything out as one unit all right, so now that I got the bolts out of each end, now I have, this is the only thing holding up right now. All right, so what we'll do is, we'll take the, take the nuts completely off the back here. 
And once we get those off, we'll, we'll remove both of these and the bearing. So we won't need that anymore. We're not gonna need any of this anymore. So now this exposes these bolts, the ones I told you that we had to get out. So we're gonna, have, we're gonna take and slide that out enough to push these out just to get these bolts out because we're going to need these three holes for this on the gearbox. Or should I say, on these, these posts right here, these three pins have to go into these three holes. So we got to get these bolts out of the way. And then that that parallel box will slide onto the shaft. Or take these two bolts out. We have to take these two bolts out and release that so we can slide this back enough. So let's get to it. You wanna make sure that uh, this plate and then you got these two plates, they're all lined up as one, and then we'll just raise it up until we can get our bolt in. Once you get the top one in, right here, once you get the top one in, the other one should go. This one. Okay, so leave these a little loose and leave them three and those three a little loose because what we're going to do is we're going to put the gearbox on the back and we're going to have to pull this. This is going to be able to, it's got to be able to float a little bit. So once you get the uh, gear, uh, the parallel box in, um, it's got to be able to float. So once you mount the parallel box, you're going to have to push it forward a little bit, tap it forward until you can get the bolts lined up. All right, now I'm just gonna clean this up a bit. Because this won't get dirty in here anymore, so I might as well clean it up now while I can. Because once we get that enclosed box, you won't see this crap all over the place anymore. All right, now, spin this around, get the key. We gotta put that key back. So what you're gonna wanna do is just make sure the key fits, fits good in there. Cause if you don't, <laughs> you're gonna have problems having problems should I say getting it on there so we'll take and knock that or that set screw bit into it you just put that like that tap it in and we'll just knock that off with a stone so now that we got that down inside 
that down and then just kind of knock off the high spot so it doesn't have any issues. So what, once we slide this on, you're gonna want to turn this over until the keyway is right up here at the top of the key. So we can slide that on like that. Then once we get this on, then you just put your bolts in. This, <clears throat> this gearbox will go right tight against that, uh, that nut that was in there. So these four, these four bolts I ordered with the box and they go in here. I'm going to put a little uh, primer on it and uh, Loctite because I'm not going to be taking this back off again. So, and I don't want this coming loose. A little Loctite primer. And we'll do just a dab of red Loctite. So you can see, so what you gotta be able to do is, you gotta be able to push that until you get a bolt started. And you can't do that with everything tightened up in front. So what we'll do is we'll push, push on this, get that lined up, and once we get all four bolts started, we will tighten up the front and then tighten up these. There's one. All right, so let's see if we can get put like this on there. Draw that over a little bit. Enough to get that bolt lined up. Perfect. Let's see how far off this one is. Oh, it's not bad. Now that I got them started, I'm not taking them out. I'm just going to spray them and put Loctite on them right there. The same thing with that. Now I'll do the same thing with the bottom ones and then we'll tighten it up. And I'll do the same thing with the bottom ones. Alright, 
now that we got the gearbox all tightened up, now we can just lift up on this a little bit, tighten these up, brush it away. And just rotate this around so you can get to all the bolts. Same thing with this side. There. Now we just gotta tighten. Now we just gotta tighten the, the two center hangers and we'll be good to go. done now we just got to add what oil all right so now that we got everything all installed everything's tightened down all four of these bolts are tight the front auger is all tight the hangers tight the front three bolts on each side for the bearings for the horizontal auger and I got everything all level right now. I just stuck a, the old sprocket underneath it to prop it up a little bit because usually it'll sit crooked when it's just sitting normally. I didn't want the box to be um, at an angle so I didn't put enough fluid in it. So right now it's perfectly level both ways and I'm going to take this plug out and then we'll fill it with oil till this line right here. And that'll be usually when you fill it just, just until it runs out. All right, so now we're gonna pull this plug out. And then we'll fill this up. All right, so what I have is, I have Mobile One Synthetic Gear Oil, 80 weight, 90. They, it calls for an 80 weight, 90. Right on the gearbox it says 80 weight, 90 oil. Fill line right to there. So we'll start out, this is, this is uh, eight ounces, and then we'll see how much more it takes after that. All right, so you see how that's running out right there? That's what you want to see. You want it to just run out. So that's perfect. Just like checking the rear end in your, your vehicle if you have a pickup truck or anything. <clears throat> All right, so what do we got left? We got four and a half ounces. So it took three and a half ounces because it had eight and I just got, so it took three and a half ounces of oil. The gear, uh, the box isn't very thick. So it's probably, I don't know, probably two inches, less than two inches. So it's not gonna hold a whole lot, but that's what you wanna see is you wanna see where you fill it up and it just starts to run out. So you know that it's okay. So now we got to get this cover off.
All right, so what we got is, this is all the stuff that we took off that we're not gonna use anymore, that held this all on. Uh, these four, these, these four bolts right here go with this guard. So I'm assuming that goes back on, but this stuff isn't gonna be used other than the drive shaft. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to save this for it. Nope. <laughs> I don't know if I'm gonna be able to save that. I doubt it. I doubt it. Spring pin. And that must be what holds it in. All right, so now we got to pull this drive shaft off this old chain sprocket box and it has a it has a spring pin in it so we'll drive that out there it goes all right so that's what we got is that spring pin there. So there's that, and then there's the wafer key. Usually these pretty, come out pretty easy. Yeah. See, that's a like a half moon key. All right, so now. We'll rotate this auger around. There's. Put a moon key in. And we'll see if the drive shaft fits. Line up the keyway. Just tap it. Now what we gotta do is you gotta line up now that we got this started and you know it's on the key, you're gonna tap it on until you see the the hole for the All right, so now, let's see if I can take you guys in there. The key, see the hole? And make sure that's 100% lined up so when you start driving that spring, spring pin in there, Hold it up. Here's my knee. Mm. I think it's even on both sides. And I think I'll get another piece of wire just to run through there. I doubt it's going to fall out, but um, I think we're good. Nice and smooth. Nice and quiet. And we're all done. Another job well done. Thanks for uh, sticking with me. And I hope uh, this helps anyone that thinks about uh, changing over to the parallel box instead of the chain and sprockets that are uh, exposed that you have to lubricate all the time. So uh, if you got any questions, drop them in the comments and uh, thanks again for uh, joining me. All right, well, thanks for sticking around everybody. 
and I hope that uh, it helps some somebody that wants to upgrade to the parallel box and get rid of the uh, open ch uh, chain and sprockets. So uh, thanks again for stopping by. Subscribe if you haven't. And uh, I got one more project coming up. I'm going to put the single point connection for the um, for the loader and the blower. I'm going to take and uh, take these off, and I'm going to install the uh, one point connect. So all I have to do, instead of messing around with those four connections, which are a pain in the butt, once they get used a little bit and get dirt in them, you gotta constantly clean them. So um, I'm gonna go to the single point connection that John Deere offers, and I bought the kit, it's right there in the box. So uh, that's my next project. So stay tuned, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss it when as soon as it comes out, and uh, click the bell notifications, and uh, I'll catch you next time.